By doing so, they started raiding the McLean Bible Church piggy bank for the Southern Baptist Convention. It's it's really it's really what I, it looks like money laundering by the Southern Baptist Convention cartel. Welcome to the Reformed Reckoner on Eschatology Matters, part of the Fight Laugh Feast Network and available on Boniface Media. Well, this week episode, we have a special guest with us, William Wolf. Uh, you probably know him as the executive director of the Center for Baptist Leadership. William, thanks for joining the show. Give a little bit of an introduction to our audience. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, having me on today. That's right. I'm the founder and the executive director of the Center for Baptist Leadership. We exist to cultivate courageous and uncompromising Baptist leadership for the 21st century in order to revitalize the Southern Baptist Convention from within, defend it from those who seek its destruction, and to serve as a better Baptist voice in the public square. I previously was in Washington, D.C., uh, near what we're going to be talking about today, McLean Bible Church, uh, for 10 years at Capitol Hill Baptist Church. And then I went to Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, and got my Master's of Divinity from there. So I have a political background, seminary training, and now working at the Center for Baptist Leadership. Well, yeah, we got a pretty heavy topic today. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen at least something about this documentary. This was a documentary that was originally uh, produced by, it looks like uh, the name of the group is, uh, let me see if I have it here. The Church Reform Initiative. Yeah, the Church Reform Initiative. And it's in response to, um, the title kind of gives the introduction, right? It's the Real David Platt, The Hijacking of McLean Bible Church. And I want to play a little short minute opener just to give you a sense of what that documentary looks like. Hey pastors, I'm Kevin Ezell, president of the North American Mission Board, here with my good friend David Platt, president of the International Mission Board. And we are here to serve you and your church. I have failed to act as I ought on the issue of racism. And I would actually like to make a motion for David's dismissal and removal based on gross violations of Article 9 of the Constitution. Um, this is not the forum. Hear him out. Give it to me so that I can... Turn on his mic! Turn on the mic! Why are you silencing him? There's nothing going on behind the scenes. There's no attempt to... Um, I can... I know we don't all know each other really well. All I want are the minutes from the last meeting. I'm trying to understand what, what's changed. All right. We're ending the meeting, everybody. We're, we're, we're... Where are the elders? Where is David Platt? Where are the elders? Why did they all run away? I see drop the ball all over the place. So that was just the opening minute of this documentary produced by the Church Reform Initiative which seemed to be founded by former McLean Bible Church member Jeremiah Burke, who you probably just saw there motioning for the dismissal and removal of David Platt in the church membership meeting. The, the Church Reform Initiative gives it this description of the documentary. McLean Bible Church, once a beacon of light with a rich history and deep roots within the community, was nearly destroyed by the deception, disillusionment, and false teaching under David Platt's leadership. Get to know the faces and hear testimonies by current and former members and elder. Learn how David came on board and understand why his statement, quote, we are not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention, was the great deception and how, with the help of his proxies, he destroyed ministries that not only served godly men and women, but also served the Metro Washington DC community, labeling them as shallow and inefficient. How he erased Lon Solomon's presence from a church he pastored for over 30 years and how members called him and the elder board to account during the March 31st, 2021 congregational meeting. It's time to shine a light on the darkness. William, this documentary is going after some big, heavy hits. There's a lot of information provided to us. Kind of the question I have for you is why does this one church and the problem with this kind of a local congregation matter for us? Why should this be a national conversation? Yeah, it, it, thank you. That's a great question. And if you haven't watched it, I encourage everybody listening to go watch this documentary. It is heartbreaking. It is revelatory. And it does matter for everybody. And here's why. David Platt is a darling of the American evangelical uh, movement and moment. He was part of what's known as the young, restless, and reformed crowd, this reformed resurgence that swept through American Christianity and certain parts of evangelicalism 
really from the, the 20 aughts through the 20 teens. David Platt is a best-selling author. Many people will have read his book, Radical. And prior to coming to McLean Bible Church, David Platt was the president of the International Missions Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is the largest missionary sending agency in the world. And so David has this interesting transition from being what was essentially a, a mega church pastor in Alabama to running the IMB to taking over and destroying McLean Bible Church, which was this very you know, large and arguably healthy in some ways, megachurch in the Washington, D.C. metro area. And so it, it matters for all of American evangelicalism because of who David Platt is, his stature and his standing. And it also matters for the Southern Baptist Convention, America's largest Protestant denomination. Yeah, so it's interesting. You mentioned that it's the largest Protestant denomination. And as I was doing research for this, it's it seems almost unclear whether we could call the SBC a denomination or free association. And that even comes up in the documentary where I think David Platt and the people he's working with in the SBC are feeding lines of, well, we're not technically part of this denomination. But what, what do you think is really going on there? What, what do we mean by denomination? Is this just word trickery? What's going on? Yeah, so th that's an important question, and let me try to answer it briefly, and then I definitely want to get into some of the, the really shocking and underhanded actions that we see being perpetrated by David Platt and his enablers. But when it comes to the Southern Baptist Convention, it is fair to say it is both a denomination and not a denomination. It is a convention of freely associating churches who are partnering together for the sake of seminary training. We have six seminaries, uh, church planting fundamentally through the North American Mission Board, which features prominently in this documentary, and then the International Missions Board, which does global missions. But the thing is, we're not a denomination in the sense that we have a hierarchical structure. The Southern Baptist Convention cannot force a church to believe anything or to do anything. It cannot take its building. It cannot remove its pastors or anything like that. However, we do have a statement of faith, the Baptist Faith and Message 2000, that all churches who partner with the Southern Baptist Convention must say they affirm. And then we have a giving structure that sort of solidifies this arrangement and this agreement in which you agree to give to the Southern Baptist Convention, primarily through what's known as our cooperative program. And so once you undertake those aspects of joining the Southern Baptist Convention, which McLean Bible Church did, um, and giving to the cooperative program or other Southern Baptist Convention entities like the North American Mission Board, which McLean Bible Church did under David Platt's leadership, then it is okay to use the word denomination to describe the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, how, what's going on here in this documentary is that David Platt and his enablers and defenders and the people particularly working at the Southern Baptist Convention, one of the men who was interviewed in the depositions, a part of the Southern Baptist Convention Executive Committee, they're, they're trying to say we're not a denomination in order to give Platt some sort of smoke screen of plausible deniability about their association with us. But whether you want to call us a convention or a denomination, we do have standards of association and we have ways to enter into membership and cooperation with churches. And that is exactly what David Platt did at McLean Bible Church, even over against their constitution. And that, that seems to be the key issue here is that McLean Bible Church had their own um, rules. It seems, I don't know if they'd use the word covenant, but right, obviously this agreement as a church of how to structure themselves. And you mentioned that the SBC doesn't necessarily appoint pastors or they don't have that traditional, you know, polity. But from this documentary, it really seems like outside forces kind of came in and pushed David Platt into this role. And later on, even now, if you go on their websites, there's a lot of SBC, you know, seminary grads in this group. And they seem to be pushing, and this is where I think you have a uh, strong uh, understanding of this and um, maybe some deep insights. Through those pushes of David Platt and other maybe uh, seminary grads, they really brought in wokeness into this church. And I think that's kind of the danger that you're seeing and trying to address in the SBC. Right. So when you watch the documentary, I think that there are three major buckets that could be considered and addressed. The first one is the wokeness of David Platt, 
and the way that he brings critical race theory into McLean and divides the church by race, which is driven in many ways by ideology found in a book called Divided by Faith um, by Christian Emerson and uh, Michael Smith, I believe it is. Um, and that is a, a really soft peddling of CRT for churches. So you have the wokeness, then you have our, then you have the corruption, which is really where we see David Platt and his enablers, Dale Sutherland in particular, and his contacts at the North American Mission Board and in the Southern Baptist Convention, using the McLean Bible Church's substantial funds as essentially a money laundering operation to drive millions of dollars to Southern Baptist Convention endeavors. Now we could say that those endeavors are good things, you know, church planting and church planting training. But what happened at McLean was that David did that with these enablers from the Southern Baptist Convention overriding the McLean Bible Church's constitution. And yeah, so it seems like there was, I'm not exactly sure who to who to pin this on entirely in the Southern Baptist Convention. Certainly people who are involved in the North American Mission Board, certainly other names that popped up in this documentary that you can see. It looks like they viewed McLean as a piggy bank for Southern Baptist Convention initiatives in the Washington, D.C. area. And they orchestrated getting David Platt in there through their inside man, Dale Sutherland. Um, and by doing so, they started raiding the McLean Bible Church piggy bank for the Southern Baptist Convention. It, it's really it's really what I, it looks like money laundering by the Southern Baptist Convention cartel. You want to start reading the Puritans, but don't know where to begin. Puritan treasures for today from Reformation heritage books makes the riches of these godly writers of old accessible for the modern reader. With updated language and helpful introductions, these classic works from John Owen, Jeremiah Burroughs, and more are the perfect starting point for the curious reader. Learn more about the Puritan treasures for today at heritagebooks.org slash Puritan treasures. Enter promo code EMATTERS for 10% off your whole order. 100%. Uh, the, the documentary, and again, um, as all documentaries, they have a very clear point and it's getting it across. And I think this information needs to be looked at. And obviously, this disposition is going on right now. I'm sure that if you're interested to learn more about this, you could go to the website of the Church Reform Initiative to kind of get more involved or see um, how you could help out there. But that concept of money laundering, when you listen to the documentary, it is shocking how big of buckets do not have a clear use case. They don't have a clear itemization. You would think as a church budget, uh, the members, and especially in this type of church polity that McLean seems to have, that the members would be able to have access. But there's a couple in the documentary, when they ask to see the finances, they're questioned, they're berated, because I think there's a clear kind of hiddenness going on, kind of the smoke screen where you could have this giant bucket where it's not clear that they're sending, it seems, at the, if you count it all up, millions of dollars to the SBC. So as someone who's involved in, you know, working to continue to strengthen and reform the SBC. W William, how do you think about this? How does this intersect with your role over at um, your group, the Center for Baptist Leadership? How, how are you trying to um, address these kind of same issues? Yeah, well, again, there's there's multiple layers here, but all really the main three issues of wokeness, which is a compromise on theology in service of a progressive agenda, particularly an unbiblical racialized agenda that divides white Christians from black Christians within a church um, is, a, is a major part of the issues we're seeing in the Southern Baptist Convention that David Platt brought into McLean Bible Church. But then one of the major issues in the Southern Baptist Convention right now at a large scale, which is highlighted by this documentary, is that we have widespread corruption and mismanagement at our leadership class. In the original conservative resurgence of the 70s and the 80s, really culminating in the early 90s, Southern Baptist people in the pews rose up to take the convention back from theological liberalism. Fundamentally, they had people at our seminaries who were denying the inerrancy of scripture, the validity of the virgin birth, the miracles of Jesus, etc., and that was a real theological battle. Will the Southern Baptist Convention go the way of the main lines in America or not? 
Well, the conservatives won that fight. So now what we have decades later are men who on paper say they're theologically conservative, but then they do very unchristian things in their management of money and organizations. And that's really what's on display here with McLean Bible Church. Why did the Southern Baptist Convention, the North American Mission Board and the IMB and the other people working with David Platt need to take this money from McLean. Now, look, McLean is a big church, but one of the stories that came to mind was uh, was David and Bathsheba and how when Nathan confronts and rebukes David, he says, you know, imagine a, a man who has many sheep and then he goes and he takes this one sheep from his neighbor, right? And you are that man. Well, that's really what's happened here. The Southern Baptist Convention has tens of thousands of churches. We didn't need to come and destroy McLean Bible Church in order to continue to fund and advance our gospel mission. And so something is deeply off in the way that these conservative Christian leaders at the North American Mission Board in the Southern Baptist Convention used and manipulated David Platt, I think he was a willing participant, and McLean Bible Church. And so what are we trying to do about it at the Center for Baptist Leadership? One of our major reform initiatives is financial transparency. We are asking that our major entities, North American Mission Board, the IMB, our seminaries, and uh, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission release um, a similar level of financial details to Southern Baptist churches that nonprofits file on what's known as a Form 990. We're not saying file that with the government. We're not asking for that because we have a religious exemption. We're saying make that known. Make your biggest disbursements known, your biggest grants disclose conflicts of interest, show us what our top executives are making. And I'm not sure if any of this money movement between McLean and NAM would have been revealed on a 990, but it certainly might have been. And I'll tell you this, that if our leaders were being held accountable to these higher financial standards of transparency and trust, they would be less willing to do the underhanded things that we've seen revealed in this documentary. Well, it's so interesting. The interplay between those two buckets of concern, right? So you have the financial um, trickery and almost money laundering, it seems. And then you have this woke and, and they use kind of the same type of means, right? They present themselves, you know, as one thing while secretly bringing in, um, you know, kind of like a Trojan horse, right? So you, you say, hey, we're giving to churches. We're doing all of this. And then McLean Bible Church members are realizing we're giving millions of dollars to this group who we say we are not under the denomination with. And then same with woke theology, a similar logic happens. These pastors say in terms of justice, in terms of compassion, they bring in all this woke theology. So how do we really, this to me is, I think, a, a key question. And obviously as SBC is, you know, this large group, probably the most influential group of Christians in terms of at least size and scale in America. How do we, you know, how do we keep making it clear these tricks that are going on, right? Because they're able to hide it behind biblical language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so to, to clarify something here for our listeners, you could give money to the Southern Baptist Convention. You could give money to the IMB if you wanted to without technically being a part of the Southern Baptist Convention. You could write a check to the International Missions Board for the furtherance of gospel missions around the world if you wanted to. But here's how we know it wasn't just that it was a one-way street of McLean giving money to Southern Baptist Convention entities, but that the Southern Baptist Convention uh, officially welcomed McLean into its convention fold is because this documentary reveals emails from David Platt showing that the Southern Baptist Convention welcomed David Platt as a voting messenger to one of our annual conventions in 2018. And there might have been other years, but we can certainly see 2018. You cannot come to the Southern Baptist Convention as a voting messenger unless your church is in the SBC. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So David Platt made his church a part of the Southern Baptist Convention. There is no question. And then he lied and his leadership team lied to the people in his congregation. And then they gave all this money to the Southern Baptist Convention. And so, yes, these things play in with each other. And, you know, what what can we do about it? Well, we need widespread um, education done. And fundamentally, and this is what we argue at the Center for Baptist Leadership, 
is we need a new class of leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention. One of the most powerful organizations in the Southern Baptist Convention right now is the North American Mission Board. It has a massive budget and it gives money to church planters. And I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but there is a scale. And the thing is, it's this um, symbiotic relationship. The North American Mission Board will give money to church planters and churches to help them grow. And then as those churches become financially independent and grow and become, say, mega churches, then those churches will turn around and they'll give money back to the North American Mission Board. And there's an X level. It shows you sort of the support you can get depending on the money that you give to the North American Mission Board. And what's very clear is that David Platt, through this giving, was trying to hit this X level, the top giving um, of the North American Mission Board ranking, because I guess it gets them some sort of privileges and access and influence. And I'll finish with this. Frankly, it looks like government lobbying. It looks like selling influence and access in churches. It's like this consulting Ponzi scheme where the money's flowing both ways. But if you make sure to give them enough, then you get all the support and all the church planting help that you want. And so it's fundamentally, man, it's a broken system that is rewarding chasing dollars instead of souls in the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, that's a good word. I think as people listen to this and they go and check out the documentary, there may be some people part of the Southern Baptist Convention who are part of our um, audience, as well as just maybe people who want to find a way to get involved. Um, so how would people support what you're doing, William? How would people learn more about uh, how to uh, kind of help move uh, our church in this direction? Yeah, well, the, the, the most important thing you can do if you're in a Southern Baptist Convention church is start making a regular habit of getting informed about the issues facing Southern Baptists and coming to our annual meeting. And so reform in the Southern Baptist Convention, because we're not a hierarchical denomination, but we're driven from the ground up. Reform is done by the voting messengers who show up and get a say in electing our president and uh, passing other crucial reform agendas and items in the Southern Baptist Convention. So if you watch the David Platt documentary and it upsets you, which it should, and you're in the Southern Baptist Convention, you need to start planning now to come to our annual meeting in Dallas in June of 2025, in which I hope that there will be people who are equipped to bring this question of the relationship between McLean and the Southern Baptist Convention to the floor, whether that's through ordering an investigation or a review or asking questions of holding NAM accountable for their partnership. You know, one of the things I really want to know is, did the people at the North American Mission Board and the IMB who are working with David Platt know what was in McLean's constitution? And I think they did. I think some of the interviews show that. And if they did know that, why were they enabling David Platt to run roughshod over this church and to to just shred its constitution and then lie to its members about it. There needs to be accountability. So come to the Southern Baptist Convention, make sure to check out Center for Baptist Leadership. You can look at the work we're doing on financial transparency, in particular being led by Rhett Burns, a pastor out of South Carolina. We have podcasts that you can listen and subscribe to, read our articles, reach out to me, and we can make sure to get you connected and involved. Well, I appreciate you joining us this week, William, on this very important topic. Um, and if you have any thoughts on this, feel free to drop a comment below if you're listening to this video. Um, for, for now, thanks for tuning in to the Reformed Reckoner. Be steadfast, immovable, and always abound in the work of the Lord. We'll catch you next week. Mm -hmm.